What's up? Welcome in, Hogue and Johns. Back together. It's been a long it's time. It's been a while. It's been kind of nice. You know how this like, works? Uh, not really. You needed the rundown. Uh, we Actually, I don't have a rundown. I just have this piece of paper that has some of the stuff we're going to bring to you from Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus and Kevin Fishbane's here, too. I've got the rundown. You have the rundown. Got the rundown. Okay. He's been practicing. You're running yes. the show now. Yes. No. Us at theathletic.com. It was really weird. Like, I knew we were taking a week off of Super Bowl. And then I guess it, I don't know, you plan things and you don't realize how the weeks stack up because then all of a sudden it was like, oh yeah, well, I'm going to left the continental I'm going to United H States. Hawaii, yeah. <laughs> Went to Hawaii. But, and, but I thought we were doing a pod together late last week, but then you actually did such a good job putting together the kissing butt right now no i mean serious like i didn't expect that we got back i knew you were doing the caleb williams episode i didn't know that you were going to talk to the, all these other writers about the other quarterbacks it was great i love listening to it so i got home and i was like oh i guess i'm good till next week i'll see you in indy this is great but good job seriously I hope some good draft prep for this I, week i really hope i know the caleb williams episode kind of blow up blew up but people make sure you listen to the other one too because it, it, those interviews were very good a lot of good information in there uh, and a good job by you uh, um, especially after that. what we heard today, study those other quarterbacks. Yes, yes, got to study Ooh, them. Study them all. That there, it will good tease for your rundown that I haven't seen, but I'm ready to go. Anyway, <laughs> follow us on Twitter at Adam Hog at Adam Johns at K Fishbane. Uh, of course, HoganJohns.com is where you go to find all of our merchandise. Um, the weather's so nice. I actually got on the golf course the other day. I wore my Hogan Johns polo for the first time since the fall. And Go get them. And how you play? And birdies and pars. Yeah. No, I mean I played a couple holes oh, with James. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, the shirt's great. The shirt holds up. It's high quality Adidas dry fit material. Um, I'm a big fan yeah. of the the white shirt. The white shirt's good. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, and I don't know. I just can't believe it's 70 degrees out right now, and I'm loving it absolutely. I'm also distracted because Panthers head coach Dave Canales, new head coaches about 15 feet from us right now, and I think he has passed Matt Eberflus as the NFL head coach, most likely to pass you on the street that you would never even recognize. Brad Callahan? I, I will say, as he was walking into the room, there was like a group of people, and I could tell they were important. Well, they were like, following him. That's what caught my eye, too. Yeah. But if he had just but walked by I wasn't by sure me. which one. I was like, which one of you is somebody? Yes. And then I got to him. I'm like, oh, yeah. Canales. So what's the list? It's Canales is on there. Zach Taylor. I, I think now Floos with the beard, he's gotten out of this category. Well, the pictures of him from the press conference last week went viral. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked he looked good again today. Um, so Brian Callahan, the new Titans head coach. I still feel like Zach Taylor's on the list. Yeah. Even though he has been successful in the playoffs and shows up to local bars in Cincinnati after big wins to celebrate with the fans, which is awesome. If Mike McDonald walked in right now, would you know who he was? That's, a, that's another one. That's another good one, too. Yeah. There's a lot of random coaching hires this year. <laughs> but that's probably what people said about Matt Eberflus, too, when the Bears hired him. Very much so, looking forward to the, the annual team picture at the NFL owners. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's see if Flus is jacked again. And a certain evaluation of it that goes – Viral every year. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. All right, let's get into uh, what's been a busy day. Tuesday at the Combine is always the busiest day in terms of actual Bears content that comes out. Ryan Poles talking this morning. Matt Eberflus a little bit after that. Um, let's just start with this. Like, what, what, sh Johns, what's your biggest takeaway? <laughs> Are they going to fight a trade partner for Justin Fields down here? That's what, yeah. It's got to be yeah. number one. You don't talk that way about your starting quarterback if you're keeping him. You just don't. Yeah. It, I, I know he couched things sometimes and was like, and we got to talk about the number one pick too. And But that that just stuck with me. Like we've Now, Poles, to his credit, is more candid and head-on at addressing topics that are asked to him than most GMs in the entire league probably – um, and certainly GMs that we've dealt with in the past. But I still am with you. Like, there's still other ways to sort of dodge questions like that. Than well, do, you I, do, do you remember the narrative last year was somebody asked him last year, is it the same thing with Fields and the number one pick as what you told us at the end of the season, which is you would need to be blown away yeah. to move on. That was the narrative. The Bears need to be blown away, you know, 
by a quarterback to move on. Now it's like the Bears would need to be blown away to move off the number one pick. Yeah. I, and, I, and they still might trade Justin Fields. I, I would that. say the Bears are already blown away by this quarterback class. They're just trying to figure out which one is the best fit for them yeah. at number one or number two or something like that. No, I, I thought, you know, it, 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 as you said, Hogue, it's always tough because like we're asking the questions to Ryan Poles right. about Justin Fields in a theoretical sense of what if you trade him. But if, you, if you're not going to trade the guy who's been your quarterback for the past couple of years, you just say, I'm not entertaining those questions. Justin's our quarterback. It's not even a question. But, right. That's the, <laughs> yeah. yes. that's the point. Yeah. The point is that there are questions, the and that's why open. we're here and everything's yeah. on the table at right. quarterback. Right. Yeah. It, it's um, – I apologize, I'm probably going to end up repeating a couple things I said on CSGO earlier, but the reality is, is like, I remember sitting here in the same exact room last year doing the same type of shows. The Bears were in the same exact situation, except the quarterbacks were just different. They had the number one pick. They had Justin Fields as their quarterback. The only thing that's different is the quarterbacks are different. And the vibe that came out of our 15-minute session with Ryan Poles and then some of the interviews he did also locally kind of around here that he's not doing this year – the conclusion was they're not trading Justin. They're they're going to trade the pick. And this year it just feels like the complete opposite of that. Well, their teams are in different situations. I, I like how coaches yeah. like to separate their teams by year. And this year it actually makes a lot of sense because last year it made sense to keep Justin Fields to trade that first pick and try to build not just around Justin Fields but the entire roster. Yeah. They're in such a better place right now. And I know you can make arguments about this, that, and the other. But this defense over the second half of the season was a top five defense. You have DJ Moore, you have Cole Komet, you have two young tackles. There's players in place for Justin Fields or the most likely scenario, that next quarterback. And, and the other biggest difference is the, you got a full n- another year of tape on Justin Fields. Right. And I know we'll get into what Matt Eberfuss was saying about evaluating quarterbacks, but when you listen to it and then you cross-check that with what they've seen from Justin Fields, what we've all seen from Justin Fields, like there are still question marks about what he can do in those critical situations. And, and there's going to be question marks if they, assuming they draft somebody, there's going to be question marks about that guy too. Yeah. You know, it's not like we, we still, we'll, we'll, we won't know if, if whoever they pick is going to end up being better because that's just, that's just how this stuff works. But I do think like that's the other big difference. You said the quarterback class is better and you know more about the quarterback you have. Let's hear from polls on a couple of these things. Um, the, and the first one we have for you is just more on the field side of things. Fields the situation, what Ryan Poles had to say about that. The first pick, quarterback situation, um, contrary to reports out there, I have no master plan to present to everyone today. Um, this is an opportunity for us to continue to gather information, um, learn about the different players in the draft, um, listen to what opportunities could come up, um, and then at the end of the day, we're going to make the best decision um, that we can for the Chicago Bears. Uh, it will not be based on fear of what could happen with this and what could happen with that. We're going to put our information together and make the best decision because at the end of the day, we'll always throw our decision making against kind of our core kind of deal, which is win championships and sustain success for a long period of time. There's a lot that goes into that, uh, but we're excited to gather that information and, and create clarity uh, as we go along. Right. So, um, what is your... What is your if you decide to draft a quarterback, what is your motivation to trade Justin before free agency starts, knowing that there might be a premium on that? Yeah, again, it just depends on what opportunities pop up. Um, I will say this. Um, I think you guys know me uh, well enough now. I do, if we go down that road, um, I want to do right by Justin as well. Uh, no one wants to live in gray. Um, I know that's uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to be in that situation either. So uh, we'll gather the information. We'll move. Um, as quickly as possible. We're not going to be in a rush um, and see what presents itself and what's best for the organization. Did, 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 you, did you talk to him? I know he made those comments last week about kind of living in limbo on this. Have you had conversations with him about where you guys are at right now in that process? Yeah, so I've always felt, and I told uh, told him this after uh, the season when we had our exit meetings, that you know transparency and communication is, is key in these moments. Um, and I told him we will do that. So I've been in contact with his team and, and kind of let him let them know like what we're looking at, um, how things might play out, um, and that we'll continue to communicate as we move forward. Again, I understand how uncomfortable that is for him, um, but again, like I told him, and he understands. I think he said it 
the other day too. It's it's part of this business. It is a unique situation. So, uh, but yeah, I'll continue that communication. When, when, when do you want to know what you're going to do tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, no. Before no, free agency, or, I would love to know as soon as possible. Right. I mean, I mean, I would love to know, um, but I know that's not how the process works. Um, you know, there's sure before free agency would be good. Like I said, I'm also taking. Um, you know, if we were to do something with Justin, like I want to do right by him. Um, and I know, again, living in that gray space, you would want to do something sooner rather than later. Um, but just like I talk about with contracts, it takes two teams to figure that out. Um, but at the same time, we're also trying to figure out the draft process as well. So there's a lot of different things with different timelines going, and that's what makes it a little bit difficult. So that was kind of the beginning part of his opening statement. Um, not going to have anything to say here. You know, nothing nothing big to reveal. I thought there were some interesting comments. You hi- highlighted one on Twitter shortly after the press conference, specifically when it came to, you know, how his teammates might take a trade for Justin Fields, which is another thing. It's like even just the fact that we're that far down the road that we're answering questions like that is significant. But his answer was also, and I'm paraphrasing now because I don't have it up in front of me, but, you know, he says – that's my job, really, to, to deal with that. And I have to think about the long, long term. term. And they, he, he straight up says, I don't think they do that. And it's also not their job to do that. And they're sticking up for the quarterback, which is good and speaks to the culture in our locker room. But that was a pretty telling quote, I thought. They have views. I'm talking about Ryan Poles, Kevin Warren, Matt Eberflus, different versions of long term, just in terms of that. Well, those exact words or having a longer view of things multiple times uh, in their season-ending press conferences, uh, whether it was at Hallis Hall or here, how they're looking at the long term. And that is, every time I hear it, I just think of the financial implications that having a rookie quarterback in your roster does just for roster construction beyond this year. They're already in a great spot financially with $80 million in cap space. But now when you like look ahead and project ahead with having the rookie quarterback, a good one on that affordable deal, like, there is so much more roster flexibility that you gain over the next sev- several years, not just this year, but you're forecasting for 2025, 2026, 2027. This is what they're talking about in terms of being consi- consistently competitive. A rookie quarterback contract, albeit if you select the, the right rookie quarterback, his contract will help you provide for those runs. Yeah, and I think, too, you talk about polls and long term. His theme since he got here has been – I want to sustain success, Yeah, which everybody says, but he made it clear. He goes, this team, yeah, 2001, fell off. 2005 and six fell off. 2010, fell off. 2018, right? He doesn't want to keep doing that. He wants to try to build something like he came from in Kansas City. That is a, that's the upper echelon, but that's everybody's goal. And, you know, part of, part of doing that is making sure you have the right quarterback who can get you to that spot. The fifth-year option for Justin Fields is over $25 million. And I, and I get in in terms of quarterback contracts, that's, that's not a lot of money. It's not. But for a quarterback who ranks statistically in the bottom third of the league in very important categories, sometimes in the bottom five of the league, forget the bottom third, the bottom five quarterbacks of the league in some categories, you can't pay – Justin feels that much money in 2025. You just can't. It doesn't make financial sense. And, and that's the thing that, like, matters so much. And why, part of why this league is so fun to cover is that one team situation might be completely different from another team situation. So if you're desperate enough for a quarterback and you don't have the access to one of these top couple guys like the Bears and Commanders do and maybe consider the Patriots too if you like Jaden Daniels, you're going to be more desperate and you can be and you can also look at Justin Fields' situation and justify, you know what, compared to having to go out and, like, overpay for Baker Mayfield or something like Kirk that. Kirk Cousins coming yeah, off a serious injury. You know, and maybe those guys would be a little bit, especially in Kirk's case, a little bit more stable. Fields, for a different team, could be a bargain. Like, that contract, even picking up the fifth-year option, even saying, you know, we're not even just going to do a one-year flyer. We're going to... We're going to make this a two-year experiment, and we're going to look at the money, and we split it up over two years. It's really not that bad compared to what we would have to go out and pay Kirk Cousins. We'll take this flyer. That that can be – both of those things can be true at the same time. Like, the Bears' reality can be completely different from the Pittsburgh Steelers' reality, for example. Denver Broncos, yeah. right? Las Vegas Raiders because they're outside the top ten. And that's, that's a very important point. The Bears have 
the first pick and the ninth pick. They are in the driver's seat of this entire draft. And, of course, drafts start with quarterbacks. And there's questions about the Bears' current situation. So you know they have to look at every single one of them, especially the top five players. You know, one of the lines that Ryan pulls is he used this last year. I think it was when he was talking to us, John Z, at the owners' meetings about the trade. Draft picks are opportunity, right? But you have to make you got you got to take advantage of it. Yeah, you right? get them right. You got to get them right, yeah. and I think this is very important the way you know. And he gets that. Now, I'm mean, sure every GM says they get it, but I do think that he understands that. Like, just because we have these picks, we have to still do all this work to make sure we get it right. And one thing that you know, I've been talking about when you talk about the evaluation. Because I'm starting to do this today. Like, I'm overanalyzing this now. Yeah. Right? And I think we're going to be here. You mean overanalyzing what Cole said today? Or huh. just in general? Which no, no, quarterback? I'm overanalyzing. Like, my, my, maybe maybe yesterday I'm thinking, like, it's it's Caleb. We're, we don't, need to, we don't okay. need to do this song and dance. But then you sit there and you listen to polls and you think about what's ahead this week and all the different things they're going to be doing. And we're going to hear from Caleb Williams and all the things they're going to be doing in their 15 minutes. And then they're going to do the private workouts. And then you start sitting there and you think about how much they have to get this right. And then you start to just think about all these different quarterback scenarios. And, it, you know, you, you certainly can lead yourself down a path where it doesn't have to be Caleb Williams. Yeah, I think the question, if I were to phrase it, is will the Bears scout themselves out of Caleb Williams? Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Instead of talk themselves out of it, like over-scout themselves out of Caleb Williams, which could turn out to be the right move or could be something. Uh, you I think the fear that every see, Bears I, fan has. I just – I. Honestly, I think some of that is overanalyzing. I, it, I'm 100%. But, yeah, like, I'm admitting like, it. It's totally overanalyzing. I, I think this is pretty clear cut and dry. And I, honestly, one of my predictions of this week, and I think I've already seen it in a couple of places, is I think there's going to be more of a separation starting to be built between Caleb Williams and Drake May that already exists. Yeah. Because, and, and it would have maybe been a little bit more interesting if we saw him throw this week, which I don't put too much what stock in. What about the other but, quarterbacks? Well, there's a separation there. At least in my opinion, there is. Mm -hmm. We're big Jaden yeah. Daniels and J.J. McCarthy guys. Yeah. You are? Yeah. Why? Why are you so high on Drake May? I'm I'm high on Caleb Williams, <laughs> mostly. Jaden Daniels won the Heisman. Jaden Daniels is... I like Jaden Daniels. All right, great. Yeah. J.J. McCarthy won the national championship. Yeah, I I put J.J. in my uh, mock draft the other day. Did saw you see that? that? Yeah, about 35. Number 32. About 32 31 picks higher than he's probably going to go. He might go number one. <laughs> to if you ask Jim Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh thinks he should go number one. Jim Harbaugh trading up? <laughs> should put Jim Harbaugh on the spot. If you're the number one pick, would you really – would you draft him then? I would I would potentially wager Portillo's on J.J. McCarthy being a top ten pick. I'm trying to get your Portillo's back. I need now. to get he a Portillo's is, back. Yes, yes. Lost some Portillo's. I never today. felt better about a Portillo's bet. Usually I lose my I Portillo's I know. Bets. I was stunned when I heard this yeah. bet. You, we have to fill in the Hogan Johns listeners. Well, you guys had the bet. You guys do it. So some roosters might not know who Greg Braggs is. And then they know of Braggs. <laughs> well, some <laughs> he's in the stands. <laughs> the ones who don't know <laughs> are, are they the lucky ones? Some there no, I no. don't know. I don't know. But I love Greg. Yeah, no, we 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 have fun with Greg. I I made a I I didn't know you know this is gonna be Greg's first Ryan Poles press conference. Okay, and I did not think he was gonna ask a question. I was very confident that he was going to ask a question. Then when I showed up at the press conference and he was in a suit and you a tie. Know. Yeah. But he, yeah. Easy. Yep. And I gave you an opportunity to win your money back, or your Portillo's back, by, I had this bet, Kevin, go wait for polls at the end of the hallway by the JW Starbucks <laughs> and walk with them and get on television, uh, and then I'll give you your Portillo's back. Yeah. That was, quite, want to do it. that was quite an entrance. That was really far away to have to walk. That was <laughs> quite an entrance. Yeah. So yeah. So you were already talking about getting the bet back before it even you even right. technically lost it. No, the odds. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, wanted to have fun this morning. Yeah. It, it was minus one thousand that Greg was going to ask. I think it was, now, now. I think it was minus two hundred last night, and it was minus one thousand at about ten twelve a.m. Eastern time. Well, he's wearing that nice suit. Yeah. If we had said the over under two and a half, though, I think I would have taken the under. You take and the, he yeah. went over. Yeah, three. He went over. That was my other one. Is I lost the bet. Uh, I, I I think I owe Courtney Cronin Portillo's also. Because I, I didn't, I, the over under with her was three and a half, and I went under. It's and she went over. job by her to get yeah. four in. She got four. Yeah. She beat me on one face off. The three of us combined for one. 
But yeah. you know what? Sometimes it's good to just listen. Oh, that's my strategy. That was actually my just plan listen. coming in today, but there was one question I tried to get in on the running backs. If anybody else wants to talk about any other positions at any given point. Yeah, let's talk about Travis Homer. Well, the only thing that kind of sucks about this whole quarterback thing with polls is, like, we typically hit on a, a lot few of different positions. things. Yep. And – now we. When's the next time we get to talk to him? Well, that right was why the, draft? the end of Eberflus today. Like I asked a question about safety, and some. I think Courtney asked about wide receiver. Yeah. Like we got a little bit in there today, but you're right. Usually you're able to get through. Like because, like, and, and I've said this on the show, and I'll keep saying it until the draft. This is the least talked about number nine pick I think in NFL draft <laughs> history. Like we are not spending. I mean, yeah. we like you know we'll we'll you know edge rushers talk tomorrow. We'll be focused on them and offensive yeah. tackles, certainly, when we talk about the guys and the wide receivers. But, man, we just don't talk about number We don't talk about yeah. free agency. We don't talk about free agency. Uh, well, that's kind of – well, which is why I was trying to get a question about running backs. Yeah. Because, uh, obviously, this is not that important right now. Maybe we talk about it later in the week. But this is shaping up to be a pretty good running back free agency class because it doesn't look like these guys are going to be tagged like they were last year. And the position the Bears are in, especially – hearing that they're going to be even more cap space than they thought. Now, the whole league will. But I, I just feel like maybe this is a rare time where you you splurge on a Saquon Barkley, where it doesn't really hurt you. How about splurging on a defensive end? I think what Ho... Well, I you guess would, my point is you, you could, could do, do both. both. You could do both. And normally you'd be like, well, we're not going to spend money on a running back here because it that would run know, it's contrary to, to the way he... Runs his business. I was say, he's, never, he's never splurged on a running... Well, uh, and we also have to define... any position... True. Well, yeah. Well, linebacker. But he, like, running back fits in that category, though. Yeah. <laughs> Positions that nobody else spends on. But the I Bears mean, I don't play. know. I, I I guess, you know, we could look up the projected numbers for what, like, Saquon's going to go for. But I know the tag was around 12. Like, I don't know, man. I'd pay 12. I'd pay 12 million for Saquon Barkley. One year, 12 million. A complete back. Well, you might have to do it over two, and maybe it's two. You could do two uh, for twenty four and make twenty guaranteed or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, and that would not hurt the Bears' future at all. It's a good point. I it would, it I would really place would. more priority on a big deal for a pass rusher, though. I know, but I'm saying like, you could do both I and know, without I know. without yeah. putting yourself in cap hell in the future. You're really you're, that. That's the to me. If there's a team that's going to spend that type of money on a running back, you got to look at it from like you're just you have the luxury of doing so. And I think the Bears are one of the few teams that can say that. I'll say just in terms of covering free agency here and what we've done with the Bears here, it feels better than hearing the rumors about signing Mike Lennon. <laughs> well, that was an all time low combine yeah, I moment. I was telling you, I'll never John, forget that one. There was a combine where the entire combine we were focused on three things Are they going to re sign Bryce Callahan? Are they going to re-sign Adrian Amos, and what are they going to do at kicker? Yeah. That was a 2019 combine. Remember the kicker workout? There were Bears people <laughs> everywhere yeah. in the kicker, the workout, kicker workout in Indianapolis. Oh, and here we are. We're talking, we're, we're talking about real stuff, quarterback. Do you guys think they'll find a market here for, for Justin Fields? Do you think – so last year, Ryan Poles drove home from Indianapolis with – Framework. Let's call it framework. Yeah. Yep. In place with we. Well, we just saw the Carolina Panthers head coach walk by with the Carolina Panthers, in place for a deal that again eventually got done in a matter of days. Like, do you think that there would be a deal in place for Justin Fields here, and that team is just waiting to see how free agency plays out, and then that deal is is made. Do you think that framework can happen down here? Uh. I think some significant discussions can happen down here. I think the urgency, because I'm trying to think of this from other teams' perspectives. Like, last year, we knew there was going to be a lot of teams that wanted that number one pick. We knew that there was going to be a bidding war for it, and I think we're still a little unsure of, well, I think Justin's going to command enough to get a second-round pick, and I think that there's going to be more than one team interested. I'm not sure the urgency is going to be quite to the same level. And urgency is what drives up. The market. Right. Urgency drives up the market and participants. And I'm still trying to figure out how many willing participants there are for Justin Fields. I, I'm, I'm, I question if he'll get, if Ryan Poles would get an accurate gauge on the matter, the, the, the amount of participants. Well, the other thing is Ryan Poles has to be learning about what's the Kirk Cousins situation, what's the Baker Mayfield situation, because those are the other two but that's big it, right? dominoes. The, yeah. Sam Darnold. Yeah. yeah, no, no, those are the two big Joe ones. Joe Flacco. 
Yeah, no. Well, and that's just why those two. I do think that's why I think the end of all this results in a deal for Justin. I just I'm really curious about the timing. I'm curious about you know if you're a team interested in Justin. I don't know. Am I gonna? What do I? That team might also be looking at. J.J. McCarthy at the same time, and, and they are not going to know until draft night if they can get J.J. McCarthy. So it's, it's, I just think it's more complicated this year, whereas last year, like, he could literally put up a for-sale sign outside the Bears suite at Lucas Oil Stadium, uh, the number one pick, and, and get a deal done pretty quickly. I just think it's more complicated. And then there's another factor as we talk about, you know, handling the locker room side of it. Like, if this drags on into April – and it's April 15th, and you're Justin Fields. We already know he's annoyed with the situation, and understandably so. Do you show up to the building at that point? You get two weeks to the draft, and then and then does that become a distraction? Because now your quarterback that you've openly talked about trading isn't there in the building. You have all these off-season workouts that take place where guys get together in California and Florida and whatnot. It's it's tough. There's a lot of things. Um, so from the so I guess what I'm saying is from the Bears, I I just feel like the Bears are gonna be way more motivated to get this done sooner than maybe other teams. No, I, will I, be. I I think that free agency window will be telling because it, I think some teams will learn if they're out on Kirk Cousins here. Yeah, I think sure. some teams will. I, I I think the market for Baker Mayfield is probably the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that's really it. Cause that's probably where he wants to stay. And grow and try to become their quarterback. So there's only so many quarterbacks to go around. And he's talking about the draft. I do think that some teams like some level of certainty going into just the crazy unpredictability of the draft. And yeah. you know, if you're let's say let's say Atlanta, if you trade for Fields, it doesn't mean you don't have. It means it doesn't mean you can't take quarterback at eight. Mm-hmm. We saw we saw you know look talk about Mike Lennon right. Like they're different. I just think that yeah, there's a lot. Of, the only teams that like can be really confident when it comes to the draft that they're going to get who they want, who they think they're going to want, are the top three. Like I'm, I'm not ruling it out. I think, I think, I think it could happen in the next few weeks. But I just don't. Last year, I felt way more confident that this thing was going to happen. I think, I think we were even saying here doing podcasts that we thought a trade was going to happen before free agency started and I just I don't know if I'm all the way there we still got a few more weeks we got plenty of conversations to be had this week um at local establishments can I rail on Indy for one small thing go oh ahead no. and I don't I, oh no I don't know if this is new or not because I love Indy I love everything and the food here is unbelievable and I don't know why I've never noticed this before I'm a huge Chicago tap water fan I think Chicago is the best tap water in the world I just filled this Aquafina bottle up with more tap water, and I was noticing this in my hotel, too. It's terrible here. <laughs> it tastes awful. The Chicago Water Department is going to be calling us for Chi- sponsorship. we got to send yeah. some Chicago water down here because this is, this wow. is ridiculous. Okay. It does not taste good. Maybe we should just start bottling Chicago water and selling it. Ooh, there you go. Uh, there's a market for that. Chicago tap water is legit. Take it with you. Great. All right. <laughs> uh, let, should we hear from polls on what he had to say about Caleb sure. and the quarterback evaluation? Let's let's do that right now. In terms of your quarterback evaluation when you were in Kansas City, Cliff Kingsbury said that you know uh, Patrick Mahomes and Caleb Williams are eerily similar. When you watch the tape, do you see that? There's pieces. There's pieces that are similar. Uh, obviously, the one that stands out to everyone is just different arm angles. Um, that's a unique trait. Not a lot of guys um, can do that. Uh, I give Jeff King, um, who's on my team, credit. He he painted a picture of, you know, there's two types of quarterbacks. There's artists and then there's surgeons. Um, so within that group, you can kind of see who's the artist create, that's really creative, um, doesn't draw within the lines, where there's more of surgeons who are, you know, like your typical, like the Brady's and Peyton's. So um, you kind of branch them out on those buckets and go from there. So that's where they're, they're similar. Is there a percentage you pre- prefer with artists and surgeons? No. Winners. Do you have any concern at all that Caleb Williams or the team around him don't want to play in Chicago? No, no, no concerns about that at all. I, I would love to know why if that was the case. Like I said, I think um, as a young quarterback, and I've been around it, the infrastructure is important, and I think we've made really good progress in terms of having really good infrastructure for whoever were to come in or if, if Justin were to stay here as well. In part of your process over the next six weeks, what do you see as the, the best ways for you to evaluate the wiring of quarterbacks? What, what do you like to do to, to, to learn who they are? Yeah, spend time. Spend time. That's, I mean, right, any type of relationship, you know, it's, it's time on task and 
um, just kind of getting to know the personality. Um, there's been a ton of information gathering from my team just in terms of teammates, coaches, things like that. Um, but you got to spend time with a, another person to really understand the, the wiring. Are you, what, what are you trying to feel out in that process? What are you looking for from that? Position? Yeah, you look for examples of dependability. You're looking selflessness, leadership, um, <laughs> ownership. You know, like I think it's hard these days to find people that you know, pay. This is wrong, and it's like, yeah, it was wrong. This is what I have to do to correct it, rather than just kind of BSing your way through it. So, um, yeah, with time on task and spending time with these guys, you'll get to know some of those things. So this was also one of my um, takeaways from this thing. You t- you you brought up earlier about just a GM talking about trading a starting quarterback and like usually don't go in depth. Typically, you know, one of the questions that Braggs asked uh, that cost you some Portillos, Kevin. Mm-hmm. A question like he asked, trying to make a comparison between player X and player Y, no matter who those players are, but maybe in particular, Patrick Mahomes being the comp- <laughs> comparison. Now, totally relevant in this situation because Ryan Poles was in Kansas City and part of the Mahomes evaluation. He was evaluation. Our college scouting director. It was a very good question. But I would say 96 out of 100 times an NFL GM is going to be like, ah, I'm not into comparisons. I don't want to compare this player to that player. And his response right away is, yeah, there's pieces that are similar. Yeah. He said a unique, it's a unique trait. What they can yeah. do with their arm angles. And yeah. then he brought yeah. up a story about how Jeff King talks about surgeons versus artists, and, like, it was a real answer. And, again, credit to Poles for being that type of guy who's not afraid to answer these questions. I think it's great. But it also stood out to me because I'm like, that's pretty telling. I mean, <laughs> you're willing to entertain a question about Caleb Williams comparing him to Patrick Mahomes. The GM with the number one pick in this year's NFL draft did that this morning. That seems significant to me. Very, very, like, it's it's acknowledgement of reality in a <laughs> yeah, sense, right? Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, we know he's he's you know, considered the best player in this draft. You know, we, we probably consider him the same. We gotta figure a few things out, but yeah, he's pretty damn good. When you're curling, <laughs> are you artist or surgeon? Um uh, just trying to, to not fall. Yeah. Artist or surgeon on that one. That's tough for curling probably. Ooh. Uh, oh, Rachel Holman was a surgeon in that. That was a very impressive. I saw that, that, that shot that you posted. Shot, yeah, yeah. Do you any, want us to move on? No, yeah, I want to keep talking yeah. football. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think it's it's funny because Ryan Poles, he from the beginning, he's just generally been more candid in these in these appearances, and yeah. you kind of walk away as we are now. We're like, oh well, there you go. But see, you know what's also cool about it though is if, if you're consistently candid and you're willing to answer questions like that, then we're still sort of left in the same spot, though. Yeah, yeah, where no, we, it's don't like, we don't know. know. No. We can read into it. We can find it interesting. But I don't feel necessarily any different than I already did coming into today, whereas I'd feel the, yeah, I'd feel the exact same if you just refused to answer every question, too. It's just nice to have actual quotes and content yeah. to play for you guys here on this show, and it really doesn't change the end game at all. I think when he said that, what stood out to me was – it was like verification of what we already knew. Like they have already, like jumped in head first on this quarterback class, and that just feels extremely different. Like we're not talking about due diligence; we're talking about now artists and like surgeons. Like this conversation has reached another level. I, I get that these combine interviews may play out the same, and it's just the beginning. But I like that there's been verification that, like, yes, this year is different. Yes, we have the number of overall pick. It's different than last year. We are going to take our evaluations of these quarterbacks to another level because we have to, and this opportunity is just so great for us to change a franchise. They still could trade Justin Fields. I'm w- sorry. They still could keep Justin Fields and trade the number one pick. Yeah. Right. Your mock draft. Yeah, my mock draft. Well, my mock draft. Presenting a scenario Which for fans is to consider. what the Bears are doing, too. They're, they're t- They've rehearsed Look, Ryan Pohl said he's looking at 100 different scenarios. I'm sure that they're yeah. talking about all of it. And if you're, part of that is, you know, they're, if they're going to entertain the conversation about keeping Justin Fields, it's like what do we need to win with Justin Fields? And if we're going to keep him, we need X, Y, and Z in this trade because we need this player, this player, this player to put here, here, and here. 
and then we move forward. And like, th- there's still a path for that. If they wanted to do that. I yeah. mean, we've already obviously talked at nauseum about why we don't think that would be the path. But it doesn't mean there's not a path. I liked your mock draft. I mean, look, if you can change J.J. McCarthy at 32, and you get all those guys, you get all those picks, you get the future picks, and you pair it with a team that was that went 7-10 and 10 last year, Yeah, and, and by, there's and a lot to like about it. Sure, and by, by the way, like, the I, I threw J.J. in there because I, I think the Bears have, you know, so have done homework on him, and I think there is somewhat of belief on him. But that was mainly more the point of including in the draft. Whether he's there at 32 or not, I still – the point of me doing that and trading back in was – and I and I do firmly, firmly believe this, that the only scenario in which they were to keep Justin Fields, they would come up with another off-ramp like they did last year. Another pivot. Th- th- there has to be a pivot built in, and the biggest problem with trying to pivot this time is next year's quarterback class in the draft is not nearly as good. And you may not have the first overall pick in, in terms of having control, right? Having so, certainty, which is important for your I, own so. To, so to me, processes. if you're gonna if you're gonna go down the trade, the number one pick route, keep Fields and add all this capital. At some point, you're gonna have to use some of that capital to come up with Plan B now, I, because it might not be available next year. And the thing with Fields too, and now I don't like to steal things from other podcasts, but it's the Dan Patrick show. I think it's okay to. Mentioned something I mean, Dan Patrick said. It's insulting just to call that a podcast. Radio show, TV <laughs> show, watch it every day. And then it leads right into CSGO. Oh, does it? Usually. Sometimes. It depends when you guys nice. are. That's nice. Okay. Um, it's a good lead-in for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to switch, switch streams, though. I got to go from, you know, <laughs> Peacock to YouTube. It's a little frustrating. But the one of the things he brought up was this. If you're, if you're Justin Fields, and let's say the Bears say we're keeping you. Couldn't you say to them, okay, but and they say, we're just going to exercise your fifth-year option, and that's it. Oh, I heard this. It was right? a good point. It was a good point. So if you're Justin Fields, you're saying, okay, you're past, you passed on C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, um, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jane Daniels, J.J. McCarthy. You passed on all those guys. And Las Vegas Bowl winner, Ben Bryant, Northwestern University. Yeah. You passed on all those guys. You're going to keep me, but you won't give me a contract? You're not going to commit to me? Right. Pay me. It's you're like not pay going to pay, yeah. pay, pay me? me. You you've passed on all those guys, and you th- you you were saying I'm it, I'm the guy. You're willing to just move on with two number one yeah. picks in a row and say I'm the guy, and all you're going to do is exercise my fifth year option. You're not going to give me a contract extension. No, Pay me. yeah, yeah, I I love the logic there, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. Now on the on the other hand, the re- easy response from the parents is, "Well, we gave you a fifth year option. There were no, no. we're there were no hurry to pay you right now. What are you going to do? Not show yes. up to camp? Right? And, no, no, and I Justin's know. going to show up to camp. Yes. So I I don't, you know, but. But, it's it, it, but if he plays, if he plays slightly better, but you're still sort of in the gray after the 2024 season, and the urgency to have to pay him and make a decision becomes, you know, a little bit more urgent at that point. I do think at that point, yes, you can use that as leverage. Right. Like, well, wait a minute, you passed up on all these people. Like, what what are your options now? But what's most interesting to me about that picture that was that's painted is it's more reason to understand why the Bears would move on. Because there's no way the Bears, as far as we know, would give Justin Fields a three, four-year, $200 million right. contract. That would not happen. But if you're going to keep him, they can make the argument that, well, why wouldn't you? Right. So, so there was a quote from Eberflus that I'm right there in front of him, and as soon as he starts talking about what he's looking for in a quarterback and starts detailing and listing, I'm going to say it right here, my immediate reaction in my mind was like, oh, that's not Justin Fields. Like, everything he was listing. Like, if you needed another sign, another indication that he was moving on. Is that what this is right here? Do we have this clip from Flus? On evaluating uh, QBs? Yeah, I think we do. Yeah. Should we just play it? Yes, let's play okay, it. Okay, let's play okay. this clip. here. This is uh, it, it's a good point. Here's what Flus had to say on that. You know, obviously, we all of our reports go into a system. You know, we rank, the, rank those, and uh, those are all there for everybody to see. So that, those are always going to be there. And we always go back. A year later, and say, "Hey, were we right on these? Were we, you know, were we have to adjust or think, adjust our thinking on each and each uh, prospect?" Uh, but uh, you know, I've been looking at quarterbacks all my life, you know, and I know what, uh, what what a good quarterback looks like and what what's hard on the defense, you know, and a guy that has the ability to you know create 
um, a guy that has the ability to throw uh, uh, with timing and accuracy, and the guy that can move the ball down the field when, it, when it's critical moments, like on third down, two minute, and all those critical moments. So um, I've always looked at that, and uh, that's been a fun process for me. Yeah, I look at situations. You know, I look at the guys that can operate third down, two minute, um, in, in the end of the game situations. That, that to me, is what se- that's the separator um, for me. Um, and then you look at toughness. You know, you got to look in toughness for a quarterback really is, is about the mental toughness to be able to stand in the pocket and deliver the ball. Um, and then also have the discernment to be able to move out of the pocket and create when it's necessary. So, um, and there's, they come on all different shapes and sizes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's always been fun to evaluate those guys. Let me repeat some of that. A guy who has the ability to create. A guy who has the ability to throw with timing and accuracy. Timing and accuracy. A guy who can move the ball down the field when it's in critical moments. Third down, two minute. We know the stats for Justin Fields in those situations. No, well, that was a Luke Getze problem. Luke Getze yeah. was like almost the first question asked him. <laughs> that, was was the first, that, was one of, that was the first <laughs> of the combine where he asked the head coach, hey, the guy you fired... What are the Raiders gave to him? <laughs> oh, did a Raiders? I walked in like I don't a know who like, it was. The Ra- a Raiders guy asked the first question. About well, guessing? tried to, and then Flus gave his opening statement. Uh, and then later on, he came back and he wanted to know what the Raiders gave Luke Getzey. And I get it. We've done funny. that before, where the Bears have somebody who's on a different staff, and you ask about it. But it's a little interesting. It's like the guy you fired six weeks ago. <laughs> Tell me how great he is for the team he's on now. What would you What you like about Luke Getzey so much that you fired him? He drinks a lot of pop. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of squirt cans. Yeah, he's a big squirt fan. But again, listing all those things, like knowing what we know statistically, like that's not Justin Fields. I don't know if you need another indication or if you're gonna. If you're listening to this now or watching us, if you're just not believing where this is headed with Justin Fields, I, I don't know. I just thought that it was another strong indication about where things are headed with the Bears quarterback situation. Yeah, and I just, to, to me, kind of getting back to the timing is, you still haven't talked to these quarterbacks yet. So, like, If you are going to make this move now, you have to have conviction on at least one, if not two of them, to at least say, well, we know we like two of them. We can sort out the rest of it from here with the pro days going yeah. forward. But I think that goes back to what I was saying at the top of the show. I, I think they're already blown away generally by this class. It's and then maybe that's out. it. Maybe yeah. it's more than one. Because it, cause it, if, it, if it was just narrow focused on Caleb, and I ultimately do believe that'll be the pick, but – you're leaving yourself up to I don't know what happens. Like like I don't think I don't think Caleb Williams is gonna have like a Jalen Carter situation, but that stuff happens sometimes. Yeah. And it so if you're if you decide literally today, we love Caleb so much, the Steelers want to work out a trade tonight at St. Elmo's for Justin Fields. You pull that trigger and and then something happens in the next two months with Caleb. You're stuck. Then, then you're in a bad spot. So that does speak to that point that there's got to be more than one quarterback here that they're feeling good about in order to make that type of trade sooner rather than later, before draft night, essentially. Yeah. So these guys get around hurt. free agency. These guys get hurt training. We, right. I, I, I hate talking about it, but every year there is one prospect that either running the 40-yard dash here at Indy or at their pro day something bad happens. It does happen. Well, that's why you have Caleb Williams. Drake May and Jaden Daniels not doing a single thing yeah. here, <laughs> but meeting with teams. Well, and it's probably smart. Remember last year, it was Easter when Ryan Poles got saw what he needed to see from Darnell Wright. He had to have do that private workout. He wanted to see Chris Morgan put Darnell Wright through that rigorous workout, and then he knew we've got our guy, right? So, and I asked Polls about this today, about the timeline, because they keep talking about it's important to get these guys in person. It's important to see them eye to eye, to talk to them, and to see how they're wired. And they want to see how these guys are in the building. And, yeah. you, and, and, and you know, I had this story that went up over the weekend about what you look, how you kind of measure intangibles. One of the things someone said to me was, you want to see how they talk to the people in your building, the security guards, the secretaries. Like, there's so much that goes into this, and that stuff usually doesn't happen until... April. Now, polls made it seem like, well, if we wanted to, we could manipulate the timeline a little bit and, ha- and do some stuff with guys earlier. But, yeah, like they might – so that's the thing. Like They could say here, like, we know we're going to draft somebody, 
We just don't know who. We need to get through April and all these meetings to get to figure out who that now guy you're, is. Now, you're not saying that Shane Waldron is going to put Caleb Williams through some strenuous workout. You're, you're saying they're going to exhaust every personal yeah. opportunity they can to get to know this is, the is, person, as, as Ryan Poles yeah. has said. In the story, the Lewis Riddick line was, this is a risk. It's about minimizing risk. That, that's this entire exercise is how can I minimize risk with this pick? And when you're talking about the number one pick, when you're talking about trading a known commodity in Justin Fields, that's an even higher bar. Yeah. So they really need to make sure that they've gotten everything they need to know about all these guys, and that can take some time. I'll be really, you know, and we got time, obviously, to talk about more of this with Caleb, but I'll just be really surprised if there's – it's kind of a weird process because you're, like, trying to dig up dirt. Like, where's right. the dirt? Where's no, the I, dirt? I, I, do think I, I just don't think they're going to find much. How many dudes went to his birthday party? <laughs> right? It's a good, it's it's a good point like because yeah. it goes – It's probably unfair to him. It goes, no, it goes back to the paralysis by overanalysis. Yeah. Yeah. Overanalysis by paralysis. Either way. Um, it goes back to that where you overthink it. And I think, too, we just, like – because Caleb Williams is unlike anything we've ever seen with the NIL stuff, like, you just, you just have – you know more about him, but you still don't know – fully what he's going to be like. And they still won't know what he's going to be like until he's in the building. Um, But, yeah, I do think that – because the thing is, this is not a guy who's gotten in trouble, right? No, he hasn't. But he's he's talked about that way, right? And that's why. I feel like the spotlight he's been in, the commercials he's been in, all the stuff that usually gets thrown – the money. Like, obviously he's going to get more money when he goes to the NFL. But, like, these are things that are usually – I feel like it helps NFL teams with the evaluation because – that's always an unknown after you draft a guy. Well, how's he going to handle this, this, and this? Well, Caleb's already been dealing with that for two yep. years. Like, he's been in Dr. Pepper commercials. He's been he's, he's been in GQ. Yeah, I mean, like, you know he's already got a structure for what money he's taken in. And, he already has and, a marketing and, team. And, 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 yes, so a lot of that's already been figured out. I think it makes it a lot easier. All right, before we get out of here, I, we got to talk about Jalen Johnson real quick. Just what was your takeaway from Ryan Poles, what he laid out um, today, which was a lot of optimism that a deal can get done. They don't want to use the franchise tag, and they feel like their offer is very strong. Kevin, you and I talked about this. I think you have the best take on this. I do? Yes. Wow. Oh, my, That's a lot of pressure now. Yeah, my take was that was Ryan Poles essentially saying, if Jalen Johnson gets the franchise tag, it's not our fault. Yeah. It's his fault. That was Ryan Pohl setting the setting the bar of we gave him this amazing offer. How could like you know we did everything we could. It's a strong offer, and he talked about cash. He talked about guarantees. He talked about the number of years. He made it seem like it's probably like a three year deal, maybe. With I would imagine a high percentage guaranteed. I would imagine it'd be like an average around yeah. the Jair Alexander. Said there's an opportunity for another contract. For another at his contract. Age. So he put it all out there. So that way it's like, well, Jalen Johnson, if you don't take this, and we gotta tag you. It's your fault. Yeah, that's on you. And, and, and that's just Ryan Poles' side of things, but that's what, that's what you got to do. You got the microphone in front of you, go for it, I guess. So if, if we're assuming based on those comments, let's say that this, this offer is close to the top of the corner market, if not at the top. Well, I'm assuming they're demanding it. That's yeah. part of, like, yeah. considering and, and, the, the salary cap. And so now. maybe their Poles is saying, well, okay, we'll give it to you, but not for four or five years, for three. Do you think that's enough to get it done? My initial reaction in the scenario you just painted, well, yes, because if I'm the Bears, I'm still concerned about longevity. In it's a the sense. shoulder. Yes, yeah. he's, the he's never thing. played a full season. Yeah, and that is a real concern if I'm signing somebody to a long-term deal. Yeah, yeah. Fair point. I, but I, that doesn't mean that Jalen side doesn't of mean it. he's not worth <laughs> it. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, it also doesn't mean deals again. Yeah. Doesn't mean that Jalen's side doesn't like. The offer that Ryan Poles has presented. Yeah, it's just right. when you hear it, it, it was rare to hear a GM kind of lay it out in that format. And I don't even think it's cynical to think of it the way that I did. That, no. that that's yeah. that, that it's just you're, you're playing you're you're playing the negotiation, you're playing hardball. All right, all it's right. Good being back, man. It's good to see you. It's uh, you know, I do love you guys. It was nice hey, being in Hawaii. You're getting though. sentimental. It was be, it was nice being in Hawaii though. I'm not gonna on lie. the road to Hana, you're just like, God, I got I miss my buddy Adam. Uh, <laughs> that thought did not occur to me as I was winding through 609 turns on that road. Oh, it is insane. How nervous did you get on some of those? Nice. Not really because I had good prep, 
if you go around the north west side of the island of Maui, it's actually a harder drive. It's shorter, and there's not quite as many turns, but you go down some valleys on these turns where there's literally, it's one lane, it's down the one lane, both directions, and, there is and no there's guard no guardrail, <laughs> and you're looking down there, and that was way crazier. To There's more turns on the road to Hana, but they were safer turns, in my opinion. Um, so I got that prep in, out of the way a day, a day early. It was fun. It's beautiful. I've done it. Yeah. I was more worried about my wife getting car sick, because that's crazy. I don't know how kids can make that trip to Hana without getting car sick. There is a scene yeah. at the end of it, at least the route that we took, where you get all these rolling hills and you're like you're on the top of a kind of a peak. Did you stop there? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. and yeah. blows you away. Yeah, it's the best. Any comment? <laughs> uh, Robert Mays was in Mexico. <laughs> I saw some tweets about Mexico City. It looked awesome. Food looked outstanding as always. Wait, Mays Mays posted some of the food pictures. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was it was a new thing he was doing. <laughs> I, I'm, he's over here. I'm, I I love mazes. I I keep mazes doc like Google Doc of Chicago restaurants. Uh, even though I don't well, live in Chicago, I, I love. He's he's the. I've sent that to so many people. In terms of like, here's a guide of where to get good food. Well, he didn't even notice, but I took notes on his indie recommendations last year, so I didn't even have to text him last week when he was in Mexico saying, "Hey, where should I book a reservation Monday night?" And we went to, uh, is it li- livery livery? Livery, yeah, well, however it's pronounced. We went there last night. It was outstanding. And he outstanding. also has good football takes. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be listening to the Athletic Football Show. Uh, and Robert's here. Nate's here. There. And by the way, we're little tease. We're working on the timing of this, but we are going to try to get back together with them like we did last year for a fun show, especially with the Bears having a number, pick, number one pick again. We will be back later in the week as well um, in a couple days probably just to – Whatever, what else we get here the next few nights, uh, especially in Indy, share all that with you. Maybe some news will break along the way. Who knows? Should be fun. Kevin, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Um, you can read these guys on The Athletic, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns, where you go to subscribe if for some weird reason you're not already subscribed. Already got a bunch of content up today, I know. And uh, we'll have plenty of more throughout the week. So make sure you check that out, hoganjohns.com for all of our merch. Follow us on Twitter throughout the week as well, and you can follow our show account at Hogan Johns, I should mention, too. Make sure you give that a follow. Thank you for watching, listening. Please rate and review the podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Do all those things to help grow the show. We greatly appreciate you, and uh, we'll talk to you later in the week here from Indianapolis. See ya.